armed forces of Liberia was first activated on August 31, 1832 by Jehuri Ashman. This lasted up to 1908 under the administration of the late President Arthur Barclay. The Liberia Frontier Force was established comprising 500 men whose mission was originally to patrol the borders in the hinterland against the French and British colonizers and was under the command of a British officer. In 1965, the Liberia Frontier Force became the Liberian National Guard and later the Armed Forces of Liberia in 1970. The Navy, the Air Reconnaissance and Infantry Units were also formed. Today, the armed forces of Liberia is undergoing a major restructuring program due to 14 years of civil crisis. It currently has the strength of 1,131 personnel made up of 11 officers, 34 NCOs, 1,046 soldiers, and 40 members of the AFL band. With assistance from the USA, Germany, Nigeria, and trainers and officers from Dying Corp, USA, Nigeria, Ghana, and Benin, the new armed forces are bound to be bigger than what it was before. During the course of the centennial celebrations, a series of events were held and started with a recruitment drive at the AME University on Camp Johnson Road on Thursday, January 31st, 2008. During the recruitment drive, the Minister of National Defense, Honorable Brownie Samukai, spoke to the respective enlisted men about the values of being a good soldier. How many of you want to become an accountant? Put your hand up. Okay. How many of you, I'm coming up. How many of you um, would like, if you had the opportunity, while in college, to become an engineer? Put your hand up. Excellent. How many of you are doing business administration, public administration, management? Put your hand up. Okay. They, you know what they used to call shuffling? It's now called EBK. The whole play is wire. You know about computer. When I say it's wire, what does it mean? Right. Do we have people to do that? That's why we need you with your skills as a college graduate, as a potential college graduate, to come in to be able to serve. How many of you have seen all the roads and the bridges that are damaged in our country? How many persons would like to contribute to do that? We're looking for persons who we can train later on to become engineers or to have some kind of engineering skills to be able to serve in the Army. Do you know that the Major General who was just here a few minutes ago has a degree and a graduate degree and a professor in engineering. The one sitting over there, he's an engineer. But he's a major general. Serving the army, using his knowledge and skills to lead men and women. Now what I'd like you to do today is to think about what we're talking about. Listen to the young men and women who we have brought up your peer group. Ask them the questions you want to find out. How easy it is. How difficult it is. What are the challenges? What are the benefits? How can you move on? Can you get married when you join the army? The answer is yes. <laughs> can you get a wife when you join the army? The answer is yes. Now I've been an officer for nearly 20 years in the United States Army. It's a privilege and it's an honor to lead soldiers, men and women, in peacetime and in combat. Should you have an interest in joining the AFL, these are some of the things, the opportunities that you may do in the future. But being an officer is a sacred responsibility. Being a soldier 
is an amazing job and it's a great privilege. And with that, I'm going to end my comments and encourage you, whether you're a freshman or sophomore, a junior, or a graduating senior this year, please take a moment and consider service in the Armed Forces Library. You are leaders of tomorrow, and we need you to come in at this point in time of rebuilding the new Armed Forces of Liberia. We need young ladies and gentlemen like you who have gone through these wars to come out there to prepare Liberia for greater tomorrow. Like I said, the military, the new Armed Forces of Liberia has great opportunities for each and every one of you here to join. I've served throughout the civilian war. I never knew anything about computer science. Can you imagine? Before being an officer, I did software, ESA, PowerPoint presentation, all of that. These are some of the achievements you can have from this army. I joined the army. I did not know how to get one setup or one push up. But now, I get first push up. I get home rep first setup. I run 30 minutes, two mile run. I couldn't do one push up. What I could do, but I can't remember a stop the mind. Self determination, that's my word. I want to ask you, ladies, if I can do it, if you ladies can do it, do not hang back on your shoulder and walk from August to August. Those that are behind you are going to be taken care of just in case. So what are the benefits? Yeah, with the insurance, once you join the armed forces of Liberia, our ministry MOD, however they set it up all for you. We are insured with the Medicare insurance company. You go to hospital without a medical form, if the child is sick, you can be in Lima, Banga, whatever. Leave the medical form with the kid, with the wife. Your spouse or child has the child, and then go to all the registered hospitals. We have Cali Hospital. We have all the good hospitals in town. Take the slip, they receive the slip, and treat that child. They cover every medical requirement. <laughs>
for the soldiers to become the pride of the nation, thereby gaining the trust of the Liberian people. The armed forces of Liberia should be part of an overall security architecture. But thanks to Minister Samukai and his colleagues, I think we are rapidly transcending that concern and we now all seem to be getting on the same page with the information that is being provided to the public on what is being done and hopefully the suggestions that are coming from non-military people might well be helping to inform the reform process. And as such, we want a military that will give something back to the international community for what it has given to us. The army should now become a, de a development institution as opposed to the other way around. The soldiers should be the friends of the citizenry. They should be part of civil society and friends to the people. The enlisted men were used as uh, olives, utlets, and, and, and guards for various houses, night watch men. This is not the role of the armed forces of Liberia. I remember people say a lot of things were wrong with the AFL. But I think if we take time to study the history of AFL, they had a plan, especially as to education. Mm. So I think some of those programs, we need to bring them back. ROTC. Yeah, even they had ROTC. They also had um, what they call the quarterly parade. But there are some good things in our history that we can bring back. They must provide leadership by example. I can remember just a few years back when I was at the YMCA. I was sitting there on the, on the front porch of the YMCA so and was, President Taylor's long convoy was passing. At the end of the convoy, there was this huge gun mounted on a truck and this, this, this guy was sitting on the huge gun. And this little young guy standing by me just looked at the guy for a long time and said, yeah, ba, that Jeha won't be where I grow up. <laughs> We're talking about leadership by example. Now we have a military also that you can say today or tomorrow, after they have been trained, they will be able to serve in peacekeeping activities around the world. We need to disabuse our minds and help our citizens also to accept the fact that the military is an institution, a unit that is built up of different professions. We have doctors, we have nurses, we have lawyers, we have engineers, we have all professions within the military. Some members were concerned that, look, the army, because of the security sector reform right now, we hear that they are being well paid. They are eating three decent meals a day. They have electricity, hot and cold running water. What happens when they when down cup disappear? They're no longer on the stage. Will the government be able to sustain this? Because we all know what happened. You start something as well with military and you can't continue it. That you're planning seeds for trouble. Maybe this is a new approach to seeing a, a, a new approach to military governance. And let's think about military governance and not military management. The management you'll do in the barracks. The governance you do when you relate to the civilian authorities, when the mentality of the military is uh, reoriented such that it, re it sees itself as, you know, military people see themselves first as citizens and not as overlords, and that they interact with people as citizens. What is provided is basic housing. What is also provided is why in training because of the hall, just like this where they sleep, there is a big fan that blows around. Sometimes the fan blows hot air and they can say cut the fan off. What is provided is feeding and accommodation when they are in training at Camp Sunderwear. Upon deployment to the barracks at EBK, they feed themselves. I don't feed them because they're just like you now, they are, they are home. So just to correct that information or perception. Um, do they have running water? The answer is yes. Also, they need running water like everybody else for hygiene purpose. Do they have a place to wash up? Yes. You can appreciate 
that we need to provide some welfare for our soldiers. But it is important that like we have told our partners that whatever is being constructed, whatever is being provided, must be provided with the input of the government of Liberia, with the Ministry of Defense, with the Chief of Staff, to ensure that we'll be able to maintain those things long after they are gone. Because we insist that if you put materials and provide facilities and incentives that we cannot sustain and maintain, then we are laying the basis for problems later on. We just want to make that very clear, that that insistence remain as the position of government, that they must collaborate, we must work together. You cannot set standards without the involvement of the Minister of Defense, the Chief of Staff, or in fact the government of Liberia. Now, or well, from 1980, 1990 up to now, May God give them a good payment. May God help all of us, as we say, to have a good mind, a sincere mind, to able to live together in peace. On Friday, February 8, 2008, at 12 noon, Juma prayers were said at the 17th Street Mosque. Thank you very much. And I must say that General Abdul Rahman was very instrumental in making sure that uh, the ministry would be involved with your mosque and to continue this friendship and relationship. Thank you and thank you very much. I want to thank Almighty Allah for making this possible like today. And I do hope that you have seen the new armed forces of Liberia being formed. We want you to encourage them, have confidence in them. They are a new brand of armed forces that we are putting up together. I want you to believe they will be better, much better. They are professionals than what it used to be. Later on February 8, 2008, a newly renovated PBX was dedicated at the EKB barracks in Shefflin, Mark Gibby County. For a facility where our soldiers can go to during the leisure time or when the police and others for them to uh, interact. So he was able to win the process and decided to invest his own money I think over a 10 year period of time. We cut the 10 years down. I think he was not too happy. But we cut it down until 10 years was too long. We had to be reasonable to allow another administration, if they wanted to change the system, to allow them to be able to change if they choose to. If I say anything, I will just be repeating most of the things that he has said. But I only just want to emphasize the point where it concerns discipline. Yes, it is meant for relaxation, but we must not forget ourselves that we are in a disciplined organization, and we must always respect that. We are cutting this ribbon to a facility that you will enjoy tomorrow. Maintain it, keep it, and don't abuse it. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. On Sunday, February 10th, 2008, at 10 a.m., a church service was held at the Providence Baptist Church on Ashman Street.
how to succeed in the future. In lesson one, because I know you like to ask, Pastor, can you help me out? Give me a little review. I wasn't here the week before and the week before. Can you help me out? Give me some review of what happened in the weeks past. I'm glad you asked. In lesson one of this series, uh, we learn how to deal with our times of change and transition. We learn, we learn that transition and change is inevitable. What you mean by that, Pastor Sam? That's a big word. I don't understand what you mean. I'm glad you asked. I'll break it down for you later on. Right now, right now. What do you mean? What I mean that that change is, is inevitable is that it happens whether you like it, love it, want it, invite it, go to court to stop it, admit it or not, change will come.
now raise your right hand and say after me. I Daniel Zerbi Horma Jr. Nyako E. Williams. The eight soldiers are participating in the race and they are expected to run approximately three kilometers. The male and female winners will receive an award each from the command officer in charge. Bad readiness, ease of control, and adaptability to the terrain. Rock South March has usefully been practiced in most modern warfare, including World War II, the Vietnam War, and present wars around the world. for me with the slow step Thank you for being with us for the 2008 Liberian Armed Forces Day celebration. For this important event in our soldiers' life and in the life of our Liberian society. February 11 represents and will ever represent a symbol not only for those in uniform but also for the entire Liberian people. This administration has chosen the path of confidence. We choose to deal with challenges now rather than leaving them for future generations. We want to show a big appreciation to the United States, which have taken prime responsibility for the training of our new EFL. We also would like to commend China Nigeria, and other partners of the Defense Support Group for their assistance in rebuilding our new AFL. The consolidation of peace and development is not over, as there is still plenty of work to be accomplished. To meet this challenge, we need an armed force with the capability to contribute effectively to peace and development of Liberia. We look forward to an AFL that can secure our waters and coastline. I am confident that the new AFL will be a source of pride to our people. In fact, we can say they are a source of pride today. We will seek to ensure that efforts to rebuild the new AFL are sustained and improved upon. We will continue to partner with friendly countries in exploring new opportunities for the additional development of the personnel of this force. I wish to use this occasion to celebrate 
the Armed Forces of Liberia to address in the name of the Minister of National Defense Leadership my warm congratulations and wishes of success for the entire personnel of the Armed Forces of Liberia. Flags off for the Paris Drew Town. was climaxed with a grand ball held at the Samuel Canyon Door Sports Complex, bringing the official AFL celebrations to a close. Sergeant Noah Joyce of the Armed Forces of Liberia and a platoon sergeant in the training company. I'm feeling so happy because in the first place, the Army make me to be a professional soldier, a disciplined soldier, and most of all, with integrity. I can say to any female out there, what a man can do, a woman can also do. If I can go through it, I know any other female can go through it. My name is Private Raymond Mualwa. I'm the Chief of Supply for Bravo Company, the 23rd Infantry Brigade. I was motivated based upon the encouragement given by the Minister of National Defense and that the trainer will come from the United States of America that has one of the best army around the world. And I was very much encouraged to come and join the AFL. Well, I think up to, um, up to a couple of days ago, that is about the end of January, we had about 1,100 plus uh, men and women who have been trained in our new military. And prior to that, we had uh, the activation of the first three companies, Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie, on the, uh, on the 19th of December. Uh, we presently have uh, what you call an AIT class that is ongoing, advanced individual training uh, of about 448 thereabout. And then we also have out of that class, we're going to have a class of about 20 additional officers that are coming out. So today, as I speak to you, we do have about 1,100 plus. At the same time, we have 11 commission officers. 
uh, the commander in chief has recently submitted to the national legislature a list of 16 candidates, officer candidates from the armed forces of Liberia to be commissioned as second lieutenant uh, into the new armed forces. So we are gradually building up. We also have uh, several persons who have been promoted to sergeants as well, uh, both male and female. We have the development of the uh, MOSS, military occupation specialty, the different skills level of our soldiers, not only shooting, but also professional skills that they can have. So the army is growing its proceeding. And hopefully by this February, or, or with not too long in not too long future, we're going to have another class of 500 soldiers going in, but also an officer class, a class of officers, officer cadets, officer candidates, to go to the entire range of program because you develop the soldiers and develop the NCO you need, the officers to be developed to be able to manage and provide the initial leadership for our armed forces. So that is how far we are at this point in time uh, with the strength of the armed forces of Liberia.